hunting and hunting is nothing short of an addiction. It can be casual, but for the majority of us it isn't. And we feed that addiction year round by scouring maps, having conversation, trying and testing new gear. We finish the hunting season in fall and then finally spring bear comes around and that's when we start to test our metal in the mountains again. You'll make some changes and then you'll spend the summer refining those. I try as much as I can to get into shape with practice hikes and carrying light pack. If you've got full-time employment, it's a tough deal. You might be doing some early morning hikes under headlamp or just squeezing them when you can. These hunts that we put together, they're not just a stroll in the backyard. You know, we spend a year planning for them. Leading up to the hunts, it's always difficult to ever feel fully prepared. And you anticipate the hunt for so long in the year, and then when it finally starts to come up, you start asking yourself all sorts of questions. Are you ready? It really takes getting in the truck and getting on the highway before it actually sinks in that it's go time, we're going hunting. The hunt was a mountain goat hunt in a remote part of British Columbia, it involved a day's drive. We eventually blew out a tire and almost lost the boat on that road. Well, ain't that interesting? Damn. You've got a spare? No. How many more? Okay. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm looking forward to getting in the boat. Then it becomes real. The goal is to get across the lake, get up the first gnarly bit of uh, deadfall, then take the trail in, and then climb up the steep shale and get to our glassing location. was a pretty stout boat ride and then a long hike up into goat country. To get off the boat and be greeted with a grizzly bear and cubs, you do feel small. You know that you don't belong there. It's a real gut check. You're like, should we be doing this? Should we, should we be doing this hunt in this place, this remote? We just saw Mama Grizzly and Cub while we were coming in here with two cubs. And then once we parked the boat, we looked back and a few minutes later, we see the grizzly coming towards us again. She, once she saw us, then again, she went back into the forest. A little on edge, but I think we're going to be okay, there's three of us. And if we can make lots of noise and just be safe, I think we're, the bears are going to want to have nothing to do with us, hopefully. Once you actually get boots on the ground, it's kind of surreal because you've been looking at this area for so long on maps, online, and then you're actually there and it's tangible and it's in front of you. I do not like to hike, but for hunting, I will race you there. I want to take it all in as soon as possible. I notice it the most when I see the target species and I refer to it as my blackout stage. It's when I black out and start to cover country towards that animal. Uh, solo Billy. High on a mountain, full solo bedded. That's some promising, promising stuff. Oh man, that thing looks nice. Let's just get close and get a good look at him and be ready for tomorrow. It's gonna to be a short hunting trip if this keeps up. Yeah. We've done a stalk on this Billy a day early season doesn't open until tomorrow and he's already pretty close to in range so if we can't find somewhere to camp it's going to be a long night waiting for it tomorrow and hoping the bill is still there in the morning i think we were 900 yards from him when we camped as the sun was going down i just had the spotting scope weaseled through some trees and just getting this tiny little image of him bedded chewing his cud all we could do was hope that he'd be in the same location or nearby in the morning. We had to wait him out. Dude, those are big pieces on that thing. Look at that beard. His beard's got to be like eight inches. He's floppy. Oh, yeah. For a summer go. Oh, man, we just wish it was the first. <laughs> tomorrow, man, we're going. What's the plan tomorrow? 
get up early and get up the mountain and hope that goat's still there and if he is we'll be able to sneak into rifle range and get a really good look at him and then hopefully make a shot and uh, yeah we shouldn't be too far from camp so we can bring him back and take care of him. Do you think you're going to sleep tonight? No. <laughs> Problem. We got one down 20 minutes into season. <laughs> I can't believe that. <laughs> but hey, I saw us. <laughs> Let's see the footage. <laughs> yeah, sure. That's good. Uh, yeah. Oh, look at those friggin' horns just high. Need to care. Oh, oh no. Yeah, that's no yeah. spine job. That's toast. He's still <laughs> What's it? Sorry, man, but I think that other one will be around the other corner. I think you should go get it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's done. Man. He's had enough. He has had enough. <laughs> oh, wow. Thanks, guys. Oh, man. Could have you back to the village of you. Yeah. The second coat's still there. It ran around the cliff, but it's come back. We're at 360. If we can get to 300, we're good. He's hitting the chest. Yeah? Yeah. I think we're gonna find him around the other side of that hill. Why 
Wait for the turn. That's good. What's he doing? I got him there. I think he's dead. Double header opening day, that's like a 12 out of 10. That's pretty cool to be able to go goat hunting with some of your best friends and shoot two billies on opening day, that's huge. That's the payoff for a year's worth of obsessing and that's when it's all come together. It's also a starting whistle for when the hard work begins and there was no shortage of that. Oh, dude, I'm stoked, man. This is a beautiful goat. This is exactly what I came for. And, yeah, I'm just grateful that it was, he died right away and everything worked out. Where my goat is, he's sort of around this knob. So what I'll do is I'll climb past this knob and then ski down the shale. And then once I get down there, I'll be able to see if he's there. And presuming he's there, then I'll continue to take care of the meat. Shooting the goat was the beginning of the adventure because now we've got to get a full animal off the mountain and back to the lake. That's a hell of a job. Not gonna lie, this is getting pretty frustrating and difficult. It's hard to find a place to walk with all the cliffs. up nice and heavy pretty pumped pretty happy to be here now for the trek down oh wow we took a different route down the mountain which was not as safe as the route we took up the mountain and Garrett got himself involved in some very sketchy rocks I took a fall actually dislocated my right shoulder on the mountain. Once we got down off the mountain with two goats, a couple injuries and a lot of close calls, yeah, emotions were pretty high. Hey boys. Oh man, just wanna give you guys a hug. I'm so oh, glad buddy. to see you guys. Oh. Good to see you, man. Good to see you soon, buddy. At the end of day one, sitting by the fire, we've got goats, uh, we're in relative safety, but at we didn't, I didn't feel like I was out of the rough stuff yet. My shoulder was really sore. We know there's bears in the area. Yeah, we're in the middle of nowhere. Just doing a little meat care this morning. Gonna get the bones out, trim this up, get the hair off. Um, probably just have a lazy morning in camp, rest up my shoulder and get some energy to go after some mule deer, hopefully. Yesterday after we split up, I found my goat and then once I got him all cleaned up, I headed down the creek, which was fairly not too bad of a trek until I got to some small waterfalls. And then, uh, yeah, eventually got out, pretty thankful for that, and met up with you guys just as it got dark. So spent a good portion of the day yesterday solo, which was fine, but also a little unnerving just being in all the cliffs by yourself. After we had harvested the goats, we took the meat down to the water and then we we're actually going to submerse it in water to keep it cool while we continued to hunt. While we we're there with all of our meat strewn out, we had joked about that it would be a bad time to encounter a bear and not five minutes later did we turn around there was a bear there. Where is he? Go get back and protect the meat. He's not getting our meat. Chris? Cruising cubs, yeah. Hey. Make sure scope's on low power. Hey bear! Thankfully, once we started screaming and hollering, the bear did run off. I don't know, dude. Maybe the bear just like skirted around the back of us or turned around or went above. It's hard to say. The bear definitely turned from the river up this way. Could be anywhere, really. It was just another one of those gut check reminders. At that point, it didn't make me think that we should turn around and leave. And so it was always sort of on the back burner that we might try and hunt some mule deer. So we're just loaded up and we're heading up the trail along the river to find our glassing point where we hope, hope to glass up some mule deer bucks. 
knock a couple over, right, Chris? Yeah. What do you say about your pack, putting it on? Oh, it's not great, but it's blessed compared to yesterday. It's heavy. The cowards would find it heavy, but after yesterday, it's a it's a treat. <laughs> Tell me what's going on, Nick. Uh, we just packed up camp, and we're going after muleys now. How does that make you feel? I'm a little nervous. There's a there, it was already a lot of weight to uh, get the goats down the mountain. There's a there's a maximum capacity of two goats and two mule deer and that is just going to be a lot of pain in the future but I guess that's tomorrow's problem so <laughs> whatever. <laughs> to be hunting and outside of cell service is the ultimate freedom. The longer we're out there the less we worry about the day-to-day -day humdrum of our regular life and after a couple of days that's just when it, it all feels perfect. Your only concern is what am I going to eat, where am I going to sleep, and that's it. We went back and climbed the original mountain where we had shot the goats in search of some alpine deer. Get your gun out, maintain line of sight, and then we can edge down through these bushes. We hadn't even noticed, but there was a grizzly bear and cub on the kill site. That was pretty startling to have a bear above us, very aware that we're approaching and to have barked at us. I think that's about enough for one day. That bear had the high ground advantage and was protecting its newfound gut pile. The bear was up on the goat. The goat gut pile just back up there. And now we've watched it and its cub run across the valley in there. Seem to be eating the spine. So now we're in a bit of a predicament. And where are we going to camp? The sun's going to be down in 34 minutes. So the plan is to boogie down the ridge a bit to our campsite the first night and then that way tomorrow we can have a quick scan of the hillside and then from there, assuming we don't see any deer, we'll grab the meat and pack on out of here. Yeah, we were, we were on alert then. And by this point, we hadn't seen any deer up there. That was our third bear encounter in five days. We'd had slips and falls and near misses. After that bear encounter, I think we all decided that it was probably time to go home. Like, we've had enough, we've had a good time. We're all getting sick of getting chased by these bears. Let's make our way back to the boat. We're just gonna get packed up this morning and head down the mountain, recover our meat from the river and our bag of stashed goodies, and uh, run like hell for the lake. There's a photo from the lake which captured the success of the hunt. That we had harvested two amazing animals in such a beautiful place. We've had the most crazy week climbing up in our mountains, running away from grizzly bears and shooting goats. And then here's all of our hard work just sitting on a mirror flat lake.